everyone, and welcome to Thoro Newspaper Analysis, which is presented to you by Law Seco. So today, we will be discussing two articles. The first article is from the Hindu, which is titled as BIMSTEC needs to reinvent itself. So in our previous sessions, we have already understood that what do we mean by BIMSTEC? Don't worry, we'll see it again in this session as well. And then we'll understand that what are the areas amongst the BIMSTEC countries that need to be monitored and taken care of for better cooperation and growth for all the member states. The second article is from the Indian Express, which is titled as the Wellness Workforce. So basically, this article talks about the new bill which has been passed by the parliament, which is named as the Elite and Healthcare Professional Bill 2020. So what is this bill and what are the main requisites that have been presented by the bill have been discussed in this article. And thirdly, we have the news in flash column. Before moving further, let's have a look at the project Maverick, which is almost free CLAT preparation course from Law Seco. So if you're preparing for CLAT 2021 or even 2022, you can enroll yourself for this course. The fees for this course is very nominal. That is just rupees 100. And the link is available in the description box below. With this, let's see the multiple choice question from yesterday's discussion. Who has been appointed as the new Chief Election Commissioner? Your options are Sushil Chandra, Sunil Arora, TN Session, or none of the above. You can write down your answers in the comment section below. This is the descriptive question for the day. What role has BIMSTEC played in bringing cooperation amongst the member countries? So let's start a discussion for the first article, which talks about reinventing BIMSTEC. So before we dwell deeper into this article, first let me tell you what do we mean by BIMSTEC. Basically, BIMSTEC stands for Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral, Technical and Economical Cooperation. So this has a grouping of the member states which are the littoral countries of the Bay of Bengal. Now here, the member states are India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Bhutan and Nepal. Now, when we talk about the littoral states, by littoral states, we mean the states that actually share a boundary or border with the Bay of Bengal. But here, the countries Bhutan and Nepal are the exceptions because since both these countries are landlocked in nature, but still they are the member states of BIMSTEC. So we have understood about the BIMSTEC in our previous sessions as well. You can go through for further details. So recently, the foreign ministers of BIMSTEC have met virtually in the preparation for the fifth BIMSTEC summit in Sri Lanka. So if we talk about the birth and rejuvenation and the growth of BIMSTEC as a complete cooperation and a complete grouping, so it was established as a grouping of five countries, now which has grown to eight through the Bangkok Declaration of 1997 to promote the rapid economic development. Now here, this becomes another important question as to Bangkok Declaration is associated with, so the correct answer would be BIMSTEC. Also, we need to know that the BIMSTEC came through which declaration? It was the Bangkok Declaration of 1997. So if we talk about the first 20 years of BIMSTEC, only three summits were held. And then the fourth summit was held in 2018 in Kathmandu, which is the capital of Nepal. Basically, in this summit, it devised an ambitious plan for the institutional reform and renewable, renewal for all the member states. And thus, the charter of BIMSTEC was also brought through this submit. And then, in the year 2019, Prime Minister Modi's second swearing-in ceremony happened, and all the leaders of BIMSTEC were invited as honoured guests and not of SARC. Now, here, what we need to know is that even in our previous sessions, we discussed about the tussle, which the SARC nations, which are the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation countries, they are facing because of the severe tussle, which is there between India and Pakistan. And just yesterday, we had discussed that how both the countries, India and Pakistan, need to come at peace and have to sit on the same table and at the same level so that the other countries of the SARC should also be having this entire cooperation amongst themselves. Here, that is why on the 2019 swearing-in ceremony, all the member nations of the BIMSTEC, the leaders from BIMSTEC were invited in the swearing-in ceremony. So if we talk about the recent decisions that have been taken at this particular front, 
the foreign ministers cleared the draft for the bimstick charter and supported the master plan for transport connectivity now as we know that most of these nations are in some or the other way very closely related like for example india nepal bhutan bangladesh sri lanka and even myanmar and thailand so either they share land boundaries with each other and if not they are connected by via the means of bay of bengal and that is why it needs to be taken care of that good uh, you know uh, preparations are taken up for the uh, coming up of transport connectivity as well because this, this would definitely enhance the trade and import and export amongst the countries also the preparations have completed for signing in three agreements relating to first the mutual legal assistant in criminal matters second cooperation between diplomatic academy and third establishment of a technology transfer facility in colombo so in a way all the areas like the diplomacy law as well as you know taking care of the law and order as well and even the transfer of technology and science and information has been brought through these particular signing of agreements but the decisions lacked effort to boost the trade and economy of the nation requires and that is why it is important that by the means of bimstech these countries which definitely have enough scope for trade both at the domestic as well as the international front should come together and help each other in the economic growth of one another let's understand that what are the main hurdles here now because obviously when we are talking about growing the bimstech at a good and faster level there are also a few obstacles that are seen on the way first is the weak bilateral relations of the members now when we talk about bimstech as a whole the countries might share good relationships but many a times there are bilateral tussles or bilateral uncertainties that take place in between the nations like for example very recently india and nepal had the border dispute wherein the nepal had produced and presented its national map wherein three important areas of uttarakhand which definitely belonged to the indian national map were included in the map of nepal and that is why the decision uh, came up and it brought a kind of tussle between the two countries and very recently even india and sri lanka had the problem in the east coast terminal uh, you know port as well so there also there was a problem between the two countries and even if we talk about bangladesh and india there have been serious discussions about the citizenship amendment act and even the inflows of illegal immigrants you know, from bangladesh specifically to the northeastern states of india so similarly there are other you know uh, problems as well even if in the recent uh, scenario if we talk about the issue where myanmar has faced the military coup due to which a lot of rohingya migrants uh, have moved into towards the indian states so india has not been able to accommodate them and that is why it can give a valid ground for friction between the two countries now the second one is uncertainty over sarc that we just discussed that because some of the member states of bimstech are also the member nations of sarc like for example india is a member of both though pakistan is only a member of sarc but still there is an uncertainty in the sarc nations which ultimately impacts the long term relationships of the nations which are a member of the bimstech as well and thirdly china's decision intrusion in south and southeast asia now as we know that china specifically shows huge interest in the areas of the south china sea and other southeast asian nations wherein china definitely wants to develop its own uh, you know a strong nature and it wants to develop its strong position in these countries and that is why many a times it comes contrary to the interests of the other member nations of bimstech because as we know that china is not a member of the bimstech but still it has a huge influence on the countries which are the members of bimstech ultimately leading to a problem wherein the countries are negatively influenced and thus lack of cooperation among occurs among the bimstech members so as we know already that the bimstech was founded in 1997 which was the declaration the name of the declaration was bangkok declaration and as we know the full form of bimstech is bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic economic cooperation with this let's discuss the second article for the day which talks about the allied and healthcare professionals bill 2020 So the National Commissions for Allied and Healthcare Professional Bills 2020 has been passed by the Parliament in the month of March. Uh, in the month of March. So if we talk about the specific timeline about the bill, so it was in the 1990s when initial efforts had begun and the consultations had started regarding this particular thing. Then in 2015, the first draft bill was published for public comments. 
and then in the year 2018 it was a revised bill was introduced in rajya sabha and 110 recommendations were made by the parliamentary standing committee and out of those 102 were accepted and finally in the year 2020 the final bill was drafted and has been passed in 2021 march so if we talk about that what this bill exactly is so firstly this bill provides for regulation and maintenance of standards of education and services by allied and healthcare professionals and the maintenance of a central register of such professionals like as we know the specifically in the times of covid-19 the value and importance of these professionals that are dealing with the healthcare services the hospitals the hospitals and other healthcare services these all things have been highlighted at a very good level and that is why the professionalism which we mean to say that the technical knowledge the knowledge base and the experience of such professionals has helped a lot in dealing with the situation in a very effective manner that is why it is very much important that we pay good amount of attention on the education and the services which are provided by these allied and healthcare professionals now these could be the doctors the nurses the midwifes and even if we talk about and we want to increase the scope of this even the asha workers which are the accredited accredited social health uh, activists so these people all are associated with delivering efficiently the healthcare services to every citizen in the country and that is why this bill proposes for proper regulation and maintenance of the standards of education because definitely we should make sure that when these professionals take up such important roles in the society we should make sure that the education and the standards of education that they are attaining in the preliminary levels is of, is up to the mark so that the optimal and the best level of healthcare can be provided in the country so if we talk about the key features of this particular bill it classifies firstly the allied professionals using international system of classification of occupations so now what base does it use it uses the isco which is the international system of classification of occupations according to which various occupations amongst the healthcare workers and healthcare professionals have been chosen secondly it establishes a central statutory body to frame policies and standards regulate conduct prescribe qualifications create and maintain register so thus there will be a central role which will, which would be played by the central statutory body and it would take care of the various policy framings and setting up various guidelines and standards that would help creating and maintaining the standards of what we are actually trying to achieve by the uh, virtue of this bill and thirdly it establishes the state councils and that would actually execute the major functions so definitely we need to have a body that would execute the guidelines and the uh, you know the conduct and uh, all the qualifications which are prescribed so and thus the state councils would be taking up this particular role so if we talk about that why there is a specific need to improve the healthcare we already know that the stress of modern lifestyle rapid urbanization rising chronic non communicable diseases and increasing the proportion of elderly has been seen increasingly in the past years and specifically it has increased by 10% in 2020 and thus it is of utmost priority that the healthcare services are boosted up and they are given most importance in the in, in any society so if we talk about this particular thing which would actually provide the advantage india if there is a strong demand for healthcare in the country then there are attractive opportunities which are available in this particular sector then rising manpower will definitely help in making the human human resource better and also the provision of better healthcare services at large and finally the policy and government support is required for such steps to be taken in the future with this let's see that what do we have for news in flash today firstly indian rhino vision 2020 so this vision came to a close on tuesday after the release of two rhinos of one of which one was an adult male and the other was a female in assam's manas national park from the poibitra wild wildlife sanctuary so it was designed in 2005 to achieve the target of attaining 3000 rhino population in assam and definitely it has worked very well so what is the uh, we can know that which uh, vision or which uh, project was associated with the conservation of the rhinoceros it was the indian rhino vision 2020 which has recently successfully concluded so this was all for the day we hope it was a good and informative session for you all thank you so much for staying tuned with lossico and please subscribe to our channels for such more daily updates to come